Welcome to another Healthy Indoors Minute. We're inside our new construction. Uh, it's about to be finished. It's very boomy in here, I apologize. I wanted to address um, some challenging questions that we get from some of our viewers, most recently from Big O. We get this on our channel. Matt Reisinger gets it on his channel. Everybody says this all the time. Why are we making houses so tight and then putting a machine in it to ventilate so that we can very expensively bring fresh air in and take stale air out. I like to just open a window. Here is something that you cannot do by just opening windows, even as Big O was suggesting, if he has a specially designed window opening that has a filter built into it. First of all, of course, filtration is very important. You want to make sure that stuff like pollen from outside, dust and dirt from your driveway, which us, that's a big deal. Every time you drive in, giant cloud of dust. Uh, things like lawn clippings. All that stuff falls into the category of allergens and contaminants. Anything that's a particle, that's a solid thing, even sawdust, not good for you to breathe, actually causes cancer. Really scary stuff. So try to keep that out of your house. But finer stuff like smoke particles, like uh, the smells from a dairy farm that just moved in a half a mile away, things like that are very hard to do with just a filter in a window. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is controls. Let me show you what I got in this room. So here we have an example of an array of different kinds of controls. First thing that you always want to make available to anyone in a house is an on-off switch. So I can turn things on, turn things off. Classically, this is for stuff like bath fans, old style bath fans. The newer bath fans might actually be able to detect uh, occupancy, which is a motion detector, or humidity, and specifically with something like a sense on rise technology from Brohn, it will not just detect the humidity in general, but also if there's a spike. Even if it starts really dry and it goes to somewhat less dry, it means that the shower has been turned on or a bathtub has been activated. So that is the next level up after you get to this. Uh, you obviously have up and down. That's a very easy way to increase or decrease your ventilation rate. And this is a manual setting. Um, what's nice about this is that somebody like me, who is a control freak, who uh, somebody like Big O might think of themselves as too. I think of myself as kind of a submarine captain. I'm just running around all day, tweaking, making my house perfect. I like doing that. Some people don't like to do that. I would say most people do not like to do that. We want to set it and forget it. So after this, we come to a, something like a thermostat which we all use these, whether it's a manual one where you set it and forget it, which is, by the way, what we will be doing in our house. We're going to set it to 70 degrees in the wintertime and leave it alone. And all the materials in the house, and we talk a lot about this on our channel, will come to 70 degrees and then they will hold the house there because our house is so well insulated and so airtight that it doesn't really matter when you open the door, close the door, or even open and close a window after a half an hour it's not gonna change the temperature of the whole house because all of the stuff in the house, the thermal mass that we've got in here, is gonna stay put. So I don't like set back thermostats where it slips back at night and then goes to a different temperature in the daytime. That doesn't make any sense in a house like this. In a high performance house, you just set it to one temperature, you never have to worry about it again and it will stay there forever. It's much easier to do that than to try and go up and down all the time. Something that's a more sophisticated thermostat like this one from Mitsubishi is going to also monitor relative humidity, which is a good thing to do. This thermostat particularly can't do anything with that data. It just tells me, and that's, that's a nice thing to know. But over here, we come to the more fine-tuned controls. So this one is the Fantech IAQ monitor. So it's called an EcoTouch IAQ. This is new. Um, and what we have here is the ability to manually adjust speeds the ability to run it at maximum speed, those are both manual settings, or the ability now to touch Eco, and it will monitor the indoor air for VOCs specifically. These are things that you smell, so it's mostly to do with the staleness of the air. And it will tell the ventilation machine to up or down automatically, so that I don't have to worry about it. Over here, we have the next level up, and this is a manual setting because it's so extreme. With this control, if I was to hit 60 minutes, I can flush this entire room volume of air through a HEPA filtration system. That's the amount of filtration that a hospital room uses. 
So I could clean this room out in one hour, not by replacing it with outdoor air, but by circulating the air through a filtration system. And this is something, by the way, that you cannot do in new homes that are more airtight, more insulated, have smaller HVAC systems, typically built. Those are gonna have a much smaller air handler, which is the blower that pushes all the air around through the house. The filter that's in that blower cabinet is the only thing that's filtering all the air in the house. And since it runs less now, because we have more efficient homes, it's not gonna filter as much air as an older home used to, especially with all of the in and out. Now, you can't decide how tight your house is gonna be. That is now mandated by codes to do with energy efficiency. So houses are tight. We can't help it. You have to deal with it. Opening and closing windows, in my opinion, passive ventilation, which does depend on the outdoor temperature, the height of your building, the wind, and also weather. If it rains a lot where you are, if you live in Seattle, say, you do not want to be opening and closing windows all the time as your main source of ventilation because it is going to be very moist outside. And moisture is one of the worst things that you can introduce to your house. It will lead to all of the contaminants and allergens that we talk about. So if you have an array like this, now you can fine tune and control in a true way, not just with something that's inexpensive, how exactly your house is going to breathe, how the air is gonna taste in here. So make sure that you subscribe to Healthy Indoors Magazine if you wanna learn more about this. Check out our uh, rest of our videos on our channel, subscribe there, like, comment if you have more things to add. Tune in next time.